they will become lusty. So they think that this is also a kind of lust. They should not tell like this. If anyone telling, protest them. Why Chaitanya Mahaprabhu and others, Madhvacharya, Ramanuja, all they took sannyas? This is disobedience of Guru Parampara and Guru. We should be very careful from them. <coughs> we see Madhvendra Puri, Ishwar Puri also. Someone can tell that Nityananda Prabhu, he left Sanya. Oh, he was Ishwar of Ishwar. He was Yavadhut. He was Yuruhani Nandan Balram. For him, no regular relation. After this, no one is like him. Himself God. Huh? They are told Bantasi if they do like so. So, we should be careful from that. They should not tell like this. Now, I request Sipat Kantanananda Prabhu to speak to us. Kirtanananda Prabhu is also sannyasi. He has come to so manageable condition, but even sannyasi is there. It's such a great pleasure to be in the assembly of great Vaishnavas, especially to be in the presence of his holiness Narayan Maharaj. I feel very inadequate to speak before this learned assembly. I am just a simple farm boy. But for Krishna. I don't know very much. But I know that Krishna is the Supreme Personality of God. I know that he is the only doer. We have independence to desire. But unless he fulfills our desire, our desire remains unfulfilled. He is the only doer. All others are done. <laughs> I also understand that the essence of spiritual life is simply to surrender to his doing, to become his willing instrument, to say, not my will, but thine be done. I think of the great saint whom Prahlad met and recognized as a very holy man, although he was just lying on the ground. He didn't display any outward symptoms of holiness, like special clothing, or signs 
he was recognized as a very holy man and offered due respect and then inquired from him. That sadhu could also recognize that Prahlad was a very advanced spiritual man and therefore considered him a worthy person to speak to. Prahlad asked him, how have you become so advanced in Krishna consciousness? You appear to be quite fatty or well-built or uh, although you, you possess nothing. You seem content, but you don't have any of this world's things of contentment. And he, the holy man said, sometimes I eat very tasty food, sometimes it is very stale and unpalatable. Sometimes I sleep in a palace, sometimes I sleep on the ground. I have learned to be content with whatever I have. That is also stated in the 52nd chapter of the 10th canto, Krishna says that a Ramana who is content with what he had satisfied although he has nothing but a discontent man though he possesses the throne of Indra will remain discontent and then he concludes I bow my head this is Krishna's I bow my head to a Brahmana who is content Thank you, Krishna, for now as it is. How do I use it in the best way for your service? Not my sense gratification. Sense gratification is had even by the dogs and hogs and stew who eat stew. Sense gratification is enjoyed even in hell with hellish delights. <coughs> I bow my head to a contented problem. I don't know anything else. But I'm very content to sit in this assembly of Vaishnava. Arrivo! In Shastra, 
there is so much glorification of Sharanagati. So much. But Sharanagati itself is not bhakti. It is the door of bhakti. Without this we cannot reach to the bhakti. Really, the service by all our senses and modes required of karma, gyan and job and etc. without any worldly what? Desire. Desire. This is bhakti. And it touches from last point shraddha to madanakya bhav radhika. Those who will read Chaitanya Charitamri the books of our Goswami, Guru Sanatan, Raghunath Ji Goswami, Vishwanacha Bharti Thakur, Bhakti Vishwanacha Thakur. I think there must come greed to serve Krishna in one of the rasas. It must come. You are very fortunate to come in the line of Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. You do not know, but one day you will know. So greed has no control. So greed, where more greed should go? Anartik charing chirat karunaya vatirna kalo samarpai tum unnato jalarasam bhakti isriya. This is the aim and object of our life. Jai Chaitanya Mahaprabhu came to give this manjari bhav. Samarpaitam, karunaya, out of mercy. He distributed this. Patra or no patra, no condition. He made patra, qualified, and get this. And in this manjari bhav, like in the guidance of Rupa Goswami, Aradha Dasya. So, we should try to read the books of Goswami and Bhagavad Chaitanya Chaitanya. You will see, they say, this is all right. Our grid should go there. Why not? So, Sarvanakti is essential. But itself not bhakti though. If anyone, anyone has greed like this to be the maid servant of Radhika, like in the guidance of Haruparati Manjari, oh, this is the goal of life, essence of all the teaching life. Now we are discussing about Srimad Bhagavad Katha. We have discussed Dhruva, not Dhruva. Dhruva was a devotee. He did bhakti. He was chanting and meditating mantra of Vishnu, Narayan. He was disciple of Goswami. But not pure bhakti. When he took darshan of Narayan, and then all his worldly desire went. But he still, at the time of death, by body he was going there. In Dhruva Why? Because he had still some affection for mother. Oh, where is my mother? Without mother I cannot go. She is my guru. That is why he was given to Dhruva Lok, a Vishnu Lok in this Brahman, Hari Lok. Rama Priya Bhaya So this is not Suddha Bhakti. It may be after the darshan of Krishna. He told that I was searching some piece of Glass. 
बट लकली आई फाउंड आउट डायमंड एंड ही वॉन्टेड टू गिव अप बट फॉर बिकम ही वॉन्टेड इन द बिगिनिंग एंड फॉर दिस इज है सो मच हर्ड एस्टोरिटी सो नारायण टोल दैट यू विल हैव टू बी हियर and to test the fruit of this bhakti kingdom of all you are there so we don't like bhakti like him pralad maharaj he was gyani bhakt don't think gyani means those who want to inherit their soul in brahma not that दे आर ज्ञानी निर्विशेष ज्ञानी और गोस्वामी और गुरु बर्ग है खंडन किया रिजेक्टेड है सो नॉट दैट ज्ञानी ज्ञानी भक्त इवन प्योर भक्त बट विथ एम्बुलेंस इज यूज टू डू भक्ति दैट माई वर्सेफेबल is it prefer he had no appetite he never tries to no massage no eating no drinking nothing what service any man can do because he like father mother so being he bhakti pure but we do namaskar and then we proceed to our ambarish maharaj he was pure bhakt and he was doing bhakti by the all the limbs of body can you you know गोस्वामी <laughs> No way, son. Go by Shnab and by Shnab. He departs the Lord. So Shiloh Guru Dev is now discussing the uh, stage of Ambarish Maharaj's bhakti, and he's already mentioned the speciality of his bhakti over Pralad Maharaj. Pralad Maharaj is a siddha. He's a perfected personality, and Ambarish. is only a sadhak but still his bhakti is superior because he has an essential ingredient called mamata his affection is very personalized he performed worship of the lord with all the limbs of his body as shri gurudev has said sahabai mana krishna padara bindaya bachamsi vaikunta gunarna varnaye karo hare mandir manaj वृंदावन he was the emperor of the entire planet and yet he saw it simply with as much value as you would see a stone he was the emperor by birth but yet he saw it completely as insignificant in relationship to his ishtadev just as puchapad shri kirtananda maharaj was saying how he was seeing krishna everywhere so he performed yukta vairagya all of his wealth all of his utility he before he offered to krishna and this was his stage of bhakti so this is superior to prahlad as gurudev has just said 
Prahlad was worshipping Bhagavan, the all-pervasive Bhagavan, in the sense of Bhagavan could have come as in any form. He came as Nishringa and Prahlad worshipped, but he didn't offer him water or a fan, etc. There was no personal mamata there, but Ambarish, he possessed this. So, in the speciality of bhakti, Srila Gurudeva said, these gradations of bhakti, there's nothing inferior about this gradation in a material sense. Gurudeva said, it's a speciality, a progression of speciality. So, Ambarish Maharaj, in the performance of his seva, one time in Braj, he was performing a courtesy brat with his queen in uh, Madhuvan. And on the day when it was time to break his fast, practically, the great yogi, Durvasa Rishi, he came to Ambarish Maharaj's palace. And Indian etiquette states that uh, if you're going to offer someone a guest, when, when a guest comes, then he must offer some uh, food, etc. So, Ambarish Maharaj, he offered Durvasa uh, some prashad. But Durvasa said, you just uh, wait, I have to chant my anik, and then I will return and take. But Durvasa, his meditation was on Nirvishesh Brahm. So his anik was a long time. So he was in the Jumuna. And the time for breaking the paran was coming closer and closer. Ambarish Maharaj had to make a decision, which is more important, my honor to Bhakti Devi or my honor in etiquette to this great yogi. So he was in a great dilemma. He didn't want to make any transgression. So he consulted his brahmanas and finally he himself decided, I will take three drops of Charanamrita. And this is breaking and not breaking simultaneously. So this way I am performing my bhakti, this was his consideration, and I am also respecting my honorable guest, Durvasa, Durvasa Rishi. So Durvasa, in his mystic meditation, he understood what had taken place. And he came into the palace again, he saw Ambarish Maharaj, and immediately he understood what had happened, everything. And he became infuriated. And he grabbed one of his locks from his hair and he smashed it onto the ground and out of that lock came a huge fiery demon with huge teeth and fire and a trident and came stalking towards Ambarish Maharaj to annihilate him. And we see at this point the purity of Ambarish Maharaj's bhakti, how he just stood fearlessly in the sight of this enormous fiery demon coming to consume him. He knew that Krishna is the supreme controller entirely. Rake Krishna Mareke, Mare Krishna Rakeke, that Krishna can destroy me or save me, whatever is his will. So he was totally surrendered to this um, Rakshasi coming towards him. And at that time, Surasan Chakra immediately came to the aid of his dear devotee and burnt that Rakshasi to a cinder. And then the Surasan Chakra turned towards Durvasa. So what was the stage of Durvasa's bhakti? He saw this Sudhasan chakra coming towards him and he ran. There was no question of fearless surrender in front of that Sudhasan chakra. He ran, he ran all over the universe. First he ran in the oceans, he ran in the caves, he ran in the sky, he ran under the earth, he ran in the hellish planets, he ran in the higher planets, he ran everywhere. He ran for one whole year. He went to um, Lord Shivji. Lord Shivji said, I can't save you. Then he went to Lord Brahma. Lord Brahma also said, I can't save you. Then he finally came to Lord Narayan. And Lord Narayan, he said, uh, Sadhavo Hridayam Mahayam Sadhunam Hridayam Tvaham That the devotee is in my heart and I am in his heart. I am completely dependent on my devotee and my devotee is totally dependent on me. There's nothing whatsoever that I, I cannot protect you from this Sudhasan Chakra. You have to go back to um, Ambarish Maharaj and you have to beg forgiveness from him. Only he can stop this Sudhasan Chakra. I'm not independent of my devotee. So Durvasa he went back to Ambarish Maharaj, who had meanwhile just been waiting the entire year in order to feed his guest. Durvasa 
he came back in a very humble state of mind and he offered very beautiful prayers to Ambarish Maharaj. And Ambarish Maharaj was somewhat embarrassed by his prayers. He was a pure bhakta, a shuddha bhakta. And Ambarish Maharaj, in his turn, to stop the Sudasan consuming Durvasan, he offered Sudasan Chakra all of his piety that he had incurred through his um, uh, tapasya, through his offerings to Krishna. He offered Krishna anything that I have done that is worthwhile, you please accept this and uh, so that this uh, Sudasan Chakra can be stopped. So we see his complete mood of forgiveness. This was the mood of Ambarish Maharaj. So we see him compared to Durvasa. But also we should consider that Durvasa is a manifestation of Shivji. So how could Shivji perform such an activity? And we understand that while Shivji himself was running throughout all the universes, what were all the residents of all those universes thinking? Or why is this great yogi running for his life behind the Sudasan Chakra? What has happened? And then everyone would understand, oh, he has offended Ambarish Maharaj. So in other words, all the whole universe was glorifying Ambarish Maharaj, in fact. So what Durvasa did, in fact, was a service, in a sense, to Ambarish Maharaj, in that he brought out and exemplified Ambarish Maharaj's bhakti. Otherwise, how would the world have ever known that? unless this activity had done. So in that sense, just like Shivji comes as Sankaracharya, he comes to perform a most, you know, uh, onious task. He didn't really want to do this task. And nevertheless, as Durvasa, he also uh, performed this task. But still, our consideration is bhakti. And as Srila Gurudev is leading us through these beautiful paths of Srimad Bhagavatam, he is... Um, illuminating all these different personalities and what is the degree or intensity of their bhakti, what is their focus. Srila Gurudev is constantly pointing out what is our focus in bhakti, who is our Ishtadev. Just now Srila Gurudev said that Sharanagati is the threshold of bhakti. But this is just the beginning of our bhakti. Actually where is the focus to come? Srila Gurudev has just said Radha Dasyam. From Shraddha to Madanakya Mahabhad. So all these gradations through all these different personalities are illuminating clearly for our future. Perhaps this birth, future births, etc. What is our focus? What is our goal? Where are we going? So from Sharanagati all the way up. So we see in this gradation from Palat Maharaj, he he was a siddha, a perfected soul. Yet his mamata or his intensity of affection for Krishna is not as great as Ambarish Maharaj. So this is the um, point of this uh, pastime. This is to show us what is Shuddha Bhakti. Ambarish Maharaj was in Dasya Bhav, but he had some Aishwarya there also. Not so much, not like Prahlad, there was something, but his Mamata was very thick. Therefore he's considered Shuddha Bhakta. So in this progression we can see his exalted state And we can learn from this how we can uh, take this into our own lives and intensify our focus of what is pure bhakti, what is our path, what is our gradation. It's all step by step by step, gradual progression that Srila Gurudev is leading us through. These steps of Shuddha Bhakti, pure bhakti. Enjoy.